in the ancient world, cosmology and science and religion were all more so observation. Many are impressed with modern science because we actively, like Muslims and Chinese culture did before, is increasingly technological experimentation. Setting up experimentation and technology ahead of time is very good for setting up observation. The Ionian city-states, like Miletus, were settled around 1000 BCE and by about 600 BCE, just after Homer and Hesiod, around the time of Archilochos and Sappho, Miletus became a wealthy center. What is today Turkey? People like my favorite philosopher Heraclitus would be living in Ephesus nearby on the Turkish coast. They had become, like Phoenicians whose alphabet goes through the Romans to us, they became wealthy traders and they were trading and were merchants and mercenaries for powers in the area. Miletus was ruled by an aristocracy, powerful family who had the leisure to enjoy education in the arts. Thales was a Phoenician, born to Phoenician noble parents who emigrated to Miletus, and he became famous for his accomplishments. And in an Aristophanes comedy, The Birds, someone declares, the man's a Thales, which is basically, oh yeah, Einstein, you know. Some say he wrote two treatises on astronomy, but if he did, they are lost. He was known for having his head in the clouds. Plato and others repeat the story, Thales was gazing at the stars, possibly doing astronomy, and he fell into a well. Gautama, the founder of the logic debate school of Indian thought of Hinduism, he also fell into a well. Could be a refracting device for stars. Either way, Plato says Thales was mocked by a Thracian slave girl. One other source says Thales had no family or children of his own, and when asked about it, he said they would be a distraction. It sounds like the Buddha family is a fetter. While Thales was mocked by some in his time for speculating about the cosmos and then failing to get a family, Thales hatched a plan. He looks at the stars and he saw there would be a large olive crop, paid people a couple of coins, got control of all the olive oil presses. He made a ton of money, Aristotle says, to show off because he didn't care about money, he didn't care about family, really, because he was a man dedicated to the cosmos and to the higher things. So another story from various sources says Thales channeled a river for King Croesus so his soldiers could cross and attack the Persians with far fewer soldiers soldiers than he needed. Sources say that he went to Egypt and he learned geometry and astronomy in Egypt and would triangulate pyramids from their shadows, which is basic geometry. Thales is said to have been to Babylon as well, and he looked over their astronomical records and it allowed him supposedly to predict an eclipse, there's the passing eclipse outside, in 585 BCE. Thales believed that all elements are alive, all things are full of gods or spirits. He saw the static charge from polished amber, and he saw that in lodestones and magnets as proof that spirits are inside of everything and that everything moves due to living forces. Thales argued there was no difference between being alive and being dead, and when asked by a skeptical critic why then Thales should not just die, Thales said, because there's no difference. Like Plato and Aristotle, Thales had a teleological view of the cosmos. Telos is purpose in the Greek. Study of purpose. If you believe in intelligent design, you would believe that bananas have a purpose, that the gods or god designed bananas with some sort of thing in mind where they gave bananas to the people, or they formed the orders of nature, and those orders of nature then in accord did what they were supposed to do. There was a Roman Stoic who wrote that he went down into a cave like Carlsbad Caverns, but not near San Diego, and he saw beautiful stalactites and stalagmites, and he thought, this is horrifying. And why would he think this was horrifying? If there is something beautiful, then it should be there to be seen. It is human beings expecting the world to be not just mathematical, but beautiful for creatures like us. And why would it be beautiful for nothing but bats who can't see? That doesn't make any danged sense. For Thales, water is the primary element. Heraclitus says fire is. There's a dispute whether or not Thales says all things come from water but become something different, or whether or not he actually means things remain water water and remain water in character even when they turn into stone and earth. So why would Thales claim water transforms into various elements? Well, Miletus is on the mouth of the meander, like rivers meander, and that deposits silt and sediment that built up on the banks, and so it looks like every year water turns into earth. Thales argues land even floats on water, thus actually all the continents are tectonically drifting on water, which is the primary central underlying element, and he did argue this is why earthquakes are real, and if you throw throw a handful of earth into the river, much of it will float on the river. So he would have thought, 
via simple experimentation, hand throwings of dirt, and also looking at things at the time. Keep in mind, many people have credited this with the birth of modern science. Thales saw that water breaks things into their components, which he saw as evidence that water is the primordial element. 